Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfection Hills, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our discussion about pulmonology. In the previous video, we have talked about obstructive lung diseases, including bronchial asthma, chronic bronchitis, emphysema, bronchiectasis. Today, we'll talk about cystic fibrosis and autosomal dominant disease. The kid is coughing tons of pus. Sometimes it's green thanks to the nasty pseudomonas. And in some cases, the kid may even get jaundice. With that being said, now let's get started. As you know, lung diseases are divided into obstructive and restrictive. Obstructive, I cannot get the air out, such as bronchiectasis, which could be caused by cystic fibrosis. On your exam, if the question describes the patient as having a productive cough with copious amount or cup folds, usually it's written this way, of mucus it's chronic bronchitis but pus is bronchiectasis such as in cases of cystic fibrosis cystic fibrosis where are the cysts is it in the lung no the lung doesn't have any cysts and for sure it doesn't have fibrosis because fibrosis is restrictive and cystic fibrosis is an obstructive lung disease so where is the cystic fibrosis it's actually in the pancreas you have cysts in the pancreas and fibrosis in the pancreas. That's why you have pancreatic insufficiency. Cystic fibrosis is autosomal recessive. You have a carrier parent. This is parent 1 and this is parent 2. 25% of the offspring are going to be normal. And then 50% are going to be carriers. They carry the disease, but they do not show symptoms. And 25%, this is the unlucky patient, and this is the patient with cystic fibrosis. This is the story of autosomal recessive genetic diseases. Epidemiology. The typical patient is in Northern European Caucasians, and you got to be familiar with geography. We're talking here about Norway, Sweden, Finland, Denmark, etc., Cystic fibrosis is very rare in blacks and it's very rare in Asians. Why is cystic fibrosis commoner in Northern European people? I have no clue. 95% of patients present in childhood. Translation, 5% of patients present in adulthood. Duh, I'm genius. Carrier frequency in the United States is 1 in 32. Translation, out of every 32 people, random population or random sample, you'll find one carrier of cystic fibrosis. The median survival rate is 41 years, which is freaking amazing if you compare it with history. If your great-great-great-grandpa was a doctor and you asked him about cystic fibrosis, he'll tell you, son, my best patient lived until 19 years of age. Today, the average is 41. Translation, you'll find even patients in their 50s living with cystic fibrosis. Medicine is advancing, guys. Just don't be gloomy. Pathogenesis, autosomal recessive, which is commoner in consanguineous families. People who marry within their very narrow community or their family or like people who marry their cousins, etc. Let's say that the carrier rate is one in every 25 people. And here is a question on your exam. If the carrier rate of cystic fibrosis is 1 in 25, please calculate prevalence of cystic fibrosis in the community. It's very easy. Remember probability in math. Let's go back to these good old days which were not so good. When you have a coin, a coin is a mutually exclusive probability because it's either going to be a head or it's going to be a tail. If you flip the coin once, what is your chance of getting a head? And the answer is 50%. If you flip the coin twice, what's your chance of getting a head in both flips? And the answer is 25%. How did you do it? You get this one half from the first flip, multiply it by another half from the second flip, you end up with one quarter, and this is your probability of getting two heads in a row or two tails in a row. Same thing here. If I tell you that the carrier state is 1 over 25, it means for only one parent. 
but since you'll have a husband and a wife, 1 over 25 times 1 over 25 equals 1 over 625. We call this number of couples who are at risk of having a kids of cystic fibrosis. Since this is an autosomal recessive disease, one out of every four kids will get cystic fibrosis. Translation, you get this 1 over 625 and multiply it by 1 over 4, you get 1 over 2500. Translation, out of every 2500 people, one of them will have cystic fibrosis symptoms, not a carrier but an actual disease. The question could be upside down. If the prevalence of cystic fibrosis in the community is 1 out of 2,500, calculate the carrier rate. You just work it backwards. This is 2,500 and you know that 1 out of every 4 kids will get cystic fibrosis provided that both parents are carriers. So how do you do it? You get 2,500 divided by 4 and you get 625 get the square root of 625 and you have 25 so the carrier rate is 1 over 25 translation out of every 25 people you meet in the street one of them is a carrier for cystic fibrosis but out of every 2500 people walking in the street only one will have cystic fibrosis disease not carrier before we can understand the pathology, let's first understand the physiology. Normally you have a gene coding for a protein, no kidding. Here we're talking about phenylalanine, included in something called CFTR, cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator. This regulates the chloride permeability in exocrine glands, but it differs if you're talking about sweet gland or are you talking about GIT, lungs, pancreas or any other glands. Let's talk about sweat glands. Normally, the CFTR allows chloride to get into the cell. Translation, chloride is not going to the duct of the sweat gland. Chloride is not going on the surface. This is normal. And as you know, sodium follows chloride. It's called the law of electronegativity. So sodium is going into the cell. And water is going to follow sodium. It's called osmosis. Water is going into the cell, not in your sweat gland this is normal. Let's talk about CFTR in all of the other glands including the pancreas. Here's your pancreatic cell, here's your pancreatic gland duct. Normally CFTR pushes the chloride out of the cell called secretion and into the gland. All right, chloride in the duct, sodium usually follows chloride. This will make the secretions thin and smooth. This is normal. Now in cystic fibrosis you have the opposite. You have chloride being pumped into the duct and out in the sweat. That's why one of the methods to diagnose cystic fibrosis is sweat chloride test. And in patients with cystic fibrosis, they will have increased chloride in their sweat. Opposite case is in the pancreas or any other gland. The chloride is kept inside the cell. Do not exit, stay here. Sodium follows chloride, sodium is in the cell. Water is going to follow, water is in the cell. There is no water in the pancreatic duct. You get very thick and visit secretions. These thick secretions are going to clog the pancreatic duct. You end up with some cysts, some fibrosis. Eventually, you get pancreatic insufficiency. You cannot digest anything and you cannot even absorb those fat-soluble vitamins such as K, E, D, and A. This will lead to steatorrhea, which means fatty stool. It's a stool that's greasy and floats on water when you look in your toilet bowl. Which you should do, by the way, from a medical standpoint. I'm all about public health. Cystic fibrosis is an autosomal recessive disease, DNA mutation, 3 nucleotide deletion on chromosome 7. The protein has missing phenylalanine, deletion of PHE, phenylalanine, 508, defective CFTR, as I've told you. This will lead to a misfolded protein, leading to degradation and accumulation of the misfolded protein in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And instead of it being secreted into the Golgi, 
and in, then into secretory vesicles and then into the outside world. CFTR, cystic fibrosis transmembrane regulator, CFTR is a transport protein for chloride. Here is the sweat gland, here is all of the other glands. Normally, chloride should stay in the cell. In cystic fibrosis, chloride is getting out, secreted into the duct of the sweat gland. All other glands, normally, chloride should be pumped out of the cell called secretion. This is reabsorption, this is secretion. But in cystic fibrosis, chloride stays in, sodium stays in, water stays in, so the secretions are very thick, viscous, and dehydrated. On your exam question, the typical age of presentation is a 5 months old kid of a northern European descent. Symptoms. Sputum is very thick. Coughing of copious amount or cupfuls of pus. This is bronchiectasis. And the question will mention that every day his or her parents have to switch him or her into many different body positions to get the pus out of the lungs and they repeat this twice a day. Their life is hell. The sputum may be green in color and if you see on your exam question green sputum in a patient who is coughing thick cup folds of pus, this is the pyocyanin pigment of Pseudomonas aeruginosa. You get heat exhaustion. Why? Because you're losing sodium chloride and water from the sweat, a lot of it. Eventually your skin gets dry and your skin runs out of water to evaporate, you end up with heat exhaustion. Ceteria, lightly colored greasy stool that floats on water. Why? Because you cannot reabsorb the fat or the fat soluble vitamin. Sorry, it's not reabsorb, it's absorb because your pancreas is now history. Signs, bilateral nasal polyps. I've told you before that nasal polyps happen in adults due to allergy. If you see nasal polyp in kids, especially bilateral, this is not an allergy, this is cystic fibrosis. Clubbing, clubbing happens, happens with every suppurative lung disease. Complications of cystic fibrosis, obstructive lung disease, chronic respiratory acidosis, because in obstructive lung disease, I'm trapping my air in, I cannot get the air out. Most men with cystic fibrosis have atresia of the vast difference leading to male infertility. CFTR mutation CL channel problem in the chloride leading to thick secretions which will lead to seven different complications. Number one, chronic inflammation, chronic sinusitis because stagnation, bacteria will love you, leading to infection, nasal polyps bilaterally. Chronic inflammation such as chronic bronchitis, they will clog the pancreatic duct, chronic inflammation in the pancreas called chronic pancreatitis, you end up with pancreatic insufficiency, you have no lipase, you have no hydrolysis, you cannot break down dietary fat into monoglycerides and fatty acid. Fat malabsorption leading to steatorrhea and malabsorption of the fat soluble vitamins. Malabsorption of vitamin B12 leading to megaloblastic anemia, anemia and neurological problems because the pancreas plays a role in B12 metabolism or absorption. Cysts and fibrosis in the pancreas, that's why we call it cystic fibrosis, leading to the pancreas being history. Pancreas cannot secrete even insulin, which is not exocrine, but endocrine, leading to type 1 diabetes, you are more liable to diabetic ketoacidosis. This thick secretion can clog the cervical opening in females, inability of the sperm to penetrate, leading to female infertility. So whether you are a male or a female in cystic fibrosis, you can get infertility for two different reasons. They can clog the bile ducts, especially the common bile duct, lean to gold stones. This is obstructive jaundice. That's why the kid in my first slide had the yellow skin. This is secondary biliary cirrhosis. It's secondary to cystic fibrosis. The problem did not initiate in the liver. Clog the intestinal. It's called meconium plug, and this is called meconium ileus. Some patients will have constipation. They will try to push hard, it's called Volsalva, and this can lead to rectal prolapse, which is horrible. And this meconium ileus is going to prevent stool from coming out after birth. One of the most common causes of stool not coming out is cystic fibrosis. It's not the most common one, but it's in the list. Those thick secretions will lead to stagnation, leading to recurrent febrile respiratory infections that require antibiotics. Give me an example of organisms. 
Staph aureus, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, big time, Streptnomo, Haemophilus, Aspergillus, Klebsiella, Proteus, E. coli, Mac. Uncommon organisms such as this, this stupid bacteria. Burkholderia spatia, do not ever forget this for your exam. This carries poor prognosis, decreased survival rate, increased mortality, the most common cause of losing eligibility to lung transplant. When you see a patient with cystic fibrosis developing percolderia sepatia, please take their name off the transplant list because transplant in this ugly case is not gonna help. Other complications, allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, I've talked about it before, hemoptysis, core pulmonale, because there is damaged lung, right heart cannot pump blood against it, leading to pulmonary artery hypertension, right ventricular hypertrophy, right side heart failure, leading to jugular venous distension, ankle edema, and liver distension. Spontaneous pneumothorax, why? Lung infection, ruptured blebs in the pleura, spontaneous pneumothorax, and the pressure inside your pleura is atmospheric. It's not negative, it's not positive, it's atmospheric. But if this is tension pneumothorax, it's going to be positive. Weight loss, of course, it's a chronic inflammation. Bronchiectus leading to subjective lung disease, leading to clubbing. Contraction, alkalosis first. Why contraction? You're losing chloride, sodium, and water. You're losing a hypotonic fluid in the sweat, leading to volume contraction. You're losing volume. Why alkalosis? Because the kidney responds by increasing sodium reabsorption and increasing potassium and hydrogen secretion when you lose an acid, this is called alkalosis. Respiratory failure, pneumonia and death. Pseudomonas mucopolysaccharide capsule is responsible for this pneumonia. The most common cause of death in cystic fibrosis is pneumonia related to Pseudomonas aeruginosa. In the next video, I'll talk about diagnosis and management of cystic fibrosis. But for now, please subscribe, hit the bell and smash like. Follow me on Facebook. I have more than 100 cases there. You can get my slides, my notes, my cases, my premium videos, my courses by going to patreon.com slash medicosis. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard.